All right. Uh, welcome back. We'll go to the next chapter here on the power of collective faith. So collective faith uh, simply means not just one person's faith. It is the faith of more people, two people, three people, or um, when we consider a church congregation, the faith of the whole congregation together. We've already seen that even one person's faith is so powerful. Now imagine if there are more like two people or uh, a whole group of people believing God together, how powerful that can be. So uh, the power of the prayer of agreement in prayer and intercession, we saw there is one type of prayer which is known as the prayer of agreement where two people agree. It is there in Matthew chapter 18 verses 18 and 19. It is given in our notes. So would uh, somebody like to read it either from on campus or online? Yeah, please read. Matthew 18, 18 and 19. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Okay, thank you so much. So the key over here is verse 19. If Two of you, what does it say? If two of you, yeah, um, there is a particular word there. Does it say agree? Agree, right. So agree on earth concerning anything. So if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. So what the Lord Jesus is teaching us is even if there are two people, minimum, is it possible? Two people agreeing on a matter? Most of the time it's possible. I, I think sometimes even if it's just two people, there are some issues on which we may not have agreement. But most of the time it's possible. So when we agree on any one matter and we pray together, we are told that the Father in heaven will do it for us. So what is this agreement? Agreement is to have the same heart or the same mind about a particular matter. For example, you know, we see that again, going back to sickness and healing, we see somebody is sick. So if two of us agree that this person should be well, then we have the same mind, same heart that this person should be healed. That is agreement. We are agreeing. Okay. Then we pray a prayer of agreement. God, let this person be healed. Then it is according to what we just read in Matthew 18, isn't it? If any two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So two people are in agreement. Now that word agree, if you go to the Greek, it is a word known as suphono, okay? um, which means harmony. harmony. So what is harmony? In music, we know that when, um, you know, a, per a person is singing or, uh, um, you know, in a group setting, if let's say a couple of people are uh, singing together, playing musical instruments, we usually say that they need to do it in harmony because all of them have to be, you know, they should follow the same key or whatever you call it. If one person sings in another key and, you know, an, uh, another person is singing in a completely different key where there is no sync, what will happen? It will be noise. It won't be music. So for a team that is performing together, 
musically harmony is very important but they are all working together so the musicians are supporting the singer the singer is supporting you know the the musician and the other singers that way the music is pleasant for us to listen to because they are all in agreement in other words harmony so when it comes to prayer it has to be like that we are in agreement imagine one person is saying this another person is saying something else somebody else is praying something else where is the agreement jesus never said that he will answer a prayer like that he said at least two of you if you agree uh, on earth touching one thing and i will do it for you right so we need that agreement and throughout the bible we find that um, this is this is something that god expects from us to use our authority so if any two of us let's imagine you know we are praying for the city that god uh, let there be um, a prosperity in the city let there be no crime in the city what is happening we are using our authority even two people we are using the authority and we are allowing the blessing we are stopping the evil that satan wants to put on the city so uh, when we stand together one is to ask for something and get the answer second is exercising authority we are able to stand against the devil and say no devil we will not allow you to put this on my family or on my church or on my city so exercising authority together is also very powerful and that is what a prayer of agreement will do it will help us exercise our divine authority in christ and um when two people pray together the bible says that uh, there will be a good reward okay, there is a, a verse in the book of ecclesiastes it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor so having at least one other person in agreement is always helpful see two are better than one it says right however in every situation we may not have one more person to agree with us you understand for example see jesus in gethsemane he told his disciples you pray with me did they pray they didn't pray did it make the prayer of jesus ineffective because he didn't have agreement so was jesus's prayer unsuccessful or ineffective is my question because only one person prayed no sister no right yeah even if one person prays it is effective it is successful but in some situations when we have agreement let's say there is one more person and they are agreeing with us it's it's good it's powerful you got it so every time to say that you know i can't pray if i'm alone i can't pray i need one person to agree with me that's not practical and that's not necessary but when we have people agreeing with us that is beneficial in some situations when we are praying for the church when we are praying for the city when we are praying for the nation we'll observe that group prayers are so powerful uh one person can pray but if the whole city comes together if the whole um, you know pastors of all the churches come together that is so powerful because they are standing in agreement got it so that is how the prayer of agreement works now tell me one more point i want to ask you is prayer of agreement let's let's imagine okay okay roughly 20 people let's say are there in this room and uh, we we are going to pray together and i present a prayer point the prayer point is uh, pray for a new building for our class okay and you all pray together now what is the most important thing as far as this collective prayer is concerned i gave a prayer point there are 20 people i'm asking you to pray for new building okay what what should you all do together for that prayer to be effective agreement right so agreement 
See, that is what is key, agreement. Now, 20 of us can be in this place, but if we disagree, you got it? Some of them are saying, why do we need a new building? Some of them are saying, uh, no, we don't need a new building. We'll, we'll just do online class. Somebody else is saying something else. So physically being present is nice, but heart has to be together. Did you all understand what I'm trying to say? Right? So it's not even the strength of numbers. We can be 20 people, 100 people, 200 people. But if there's no agreement, one accord in the book of Acts, it says, everyone together, agree. Heart has to be together, not just us being together. You got it? So the heart being one or in one accord is what makes the prayer powerful. Even, let's say, you know, uh, different leaders are coming together. Nice. Different leaders are coming. But is heart together? That's the question. To make the prayer effective, heart has to be together. We all need to go before God, um, you know, in a similar way and say, yes, God, we want you to do this. We want you to heal the city. But imagine <coughs> we all come together. And then we have uh, differences, right? We are, we're all having issues with each other. We disagree. What is the point of coming together? It may not be that effective as far as prayer is concerned. So coming <coughs> together is very nice. However, agreeing together is what the main point is. That's what Jesus said. If, you, if any two of you agree, on earth, right? Uh, for whatever you ask in prayer, then my Father in heaven will do it for you. So that is collective faith. Collective faith, we believe the same thing, we agree on the same thing, we are praying for the same thing. It's literally, literally like heaven will come down if we are praying like that. Okay? So we've got to develop that collective faith. Now looking at the Bible. What are some places where we have seen people praying together and uh, that prayer being effective? So in the book of Acts, there are examples after examples. There is one time where Peter and John, okay, they are uh, now apostles and they go, they um, uh, go to the temple gate beautiful there they heal one lame man okay after that they are arrested for questioning okay and uh, they are threatened they are in a very difficult situation so what do they do at that time you know the bible beautifully says that when they came back they were threatened they were told you should not preach in the name of jesus you see if you preach in the name of jesus so they've been through all these things when they come back to their church, to their people, they narrate the story, whatever has happened. And you know what the church did? What would the church do in a situation like this, where, uh, let's say, the church leaders are being threatened and persecution? What should the church do in a circumstance like this? What are the options we have? Okay, prayer. Prayer is the best option, right? And then, of course, any other wise way of dealing with the circumstance also may help. But this is what the early church did. They always prayed. Even when persecution happened, they prayed. So can somebody read the passage, which is there in, um, uh, in my notes? It's on page 83. Acts 4, verse 23, 24 and then 29 to 31. Can I read, sister? Uh, okay, yes, sister, please go ahead. Acts 4, 23, 24, 29, and 31. And being let go, they went to their own of companies and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Uh, so when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Now, Lord, uh, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. 
by stretching your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant jesus uh, and when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness okay thank you uh, thank you for reading that so some points over here that we can notice in verse 20 verse yeah verse 24 we see that in a situation like this where there is persecution they raise their voice to god with what does it say one accord one accord one accord simply means agreement harmony so they all agreed together what did they agree for let's see here they agreed that uh, god you give us more boldness that's what they're asking god they didn't say god um, help us run away or we don't want to preach in the name of jesus again so they're not prayers of weakness or fear but they are prayers of boldness they are saying god you give us more boldness that's what they're all agreeing don't you think they had amazing faith such great faith right when persecution is going on they're asking for more boldness to do the ministry what else are they agreeing for they're asking for more signs and wonders to be done in the holy in the name of jesus right so they are asking for a uh, greater ministry they're asking for more powerful ministry with signs wonders and miracles what an amazing faith the believers of the early church carry they didn't stop imagine in acts chapter 4 if they stopped if they got scared and they stopped what will happen today all of us here right we would not have the rest of the book of acts the rest of the journeys that they made to impact the world and if they didn't impact the world like this sunday we said thomas came to india right but if nobody came then who how would we have heard the gospel so they were bold they didn't stop how did they get their boldness they agreed god you give us the boldness so that was their faith such amazing faith together and the bible says one accord meaning their hearts were together they all agreed god two things you do for us make us bold let there be more signs wonders miracles why more signs wonders miracles any reason why why do you need correct so that people will know that god is real isn't it who can do signs wonders miracles only god can do so when these things happen nobody can speak against god's people you got it that they understood and they said okay god you do more let them we we did only one raising that lame man but let more and more miracles happen and we see later that god actually answered their prayer there were many other beautiful things that took place so this is the way in which they agreed and they prayed and a lot of uh, amazing things took place there are two more passages there is one in acts chapter 12 okay acts chapter 12 so what happened in acts chapter 12 is peter who is one of the apostles um for political reasons right at that time there was herod Herod was the ruler and he thought that if he kills Peter, he will, he will get the, you know, the support of the people. So he uh, gets a hold of Peter, he puts him in the prison, there's some festival going on, so he doesn't want to kill him immediately. He decides, okay, after the festival is over, we will kill Peter. That's, the, uh, that's what has happened. So now Peter is in the prison. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 12 and verse 5, maybe Diksha can read it. What does it say? Diksha, it's in the notes. Acts 12, 5. 
Acts chapter 12 verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Okay, very nice. So it says, Peter was in the prison. What did the church do? Constant prayer, right? Why did they pray? Because they believed that if they prayed for their leader, then God will deliver their leader. So they were praying. Continuously they are praying. And uh, when they prayed in this way, something supernatural happens. So we read in that passage that an angel goes to Peter and, um, you know, it, it sets him free. And uh, he sees that the prison doors are open and the angel guides Peter to come to the house where all the believers are praying together, where the church believers are praying together. So verse 12, it says, So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Okay. So here is another miracle. Earlier, when the believers prayed together, what did God do? God did more signs, wonders, gave them more boldness. In Acts 12, the church prayed for the release of Apostle Peter. What, what happened? He got released in a supernatural way. Right? So, this is the beauty of praying together as believers. We can pray. Right? They prayed for their leader. Leader is in the prison. There was no way to bring that person out of the prison. But you see, God is a God of um, the supernatural. What did he do in this situation? He sent an angel. Even if it means to send an angel, God will do it. Right? But what should the believers do? Pray. We need to pray. We need to pray together and say, God, um, we are believing you. We are trusting you. You have to do this. And God did it for them. So today, when we all pray together, we can expect deliverance. Right? We can expect uh, a release or freedom for God's people. Now, there is one more example of group prayer in, um, in the book of Acts. So this incident, it is in Acts chapter 14. What happens is, uh, again, Paul... Right now, Paul and Barnabas, okay, Paul and Barnabas, they are in one place and um, the place called Iconium. And uh, there they, uh, just the way Peter and John, they touched like a lame man got healed. Same way, uh, not Iconium, Lystra, sorry, Lystra. So Paul and Barnabas, they minister to a lame man in Lystra and he gets healed. So the people are so amazed that uh, they think that uh, Paul and Barnabas are some gods. You know, gods have come and gods have healed us. So Paul gets very angry. He says, how can you call us God? We are not God. We are human beings. You cannot worship us. You need to worship the true and living God. So that in that way, when Paul starts to speak to them, they get very angry. Because Paul and Barnabas don't allow the people to worship them. Okay. So what happens is, uh, like Stephen, you know Stephen? Who's Stephen in the Bible? Stephen, what happened to him? Stoned, yeah. So he was stoned to death. He became a martyr or he died for, the, uh, for Jesus. Like Stephen, they started stoning Paul. Okay, They stoned him so badly that... Maybe he looked like he was dead. So like they dragged him out of the city and they threw him out. Okay. But when you read the passage, um, Acts 14 verse 22. Okay, one sec. Um, yeah, verse 20. Sorry, Acts 14 verse 20. Can somebody read it? Acts 14, verse 20. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next 
day he de uh, departed with Bernard Bernabas to Debar. Derby. Okay. So, so you know, in such a cool way, in just one line, Luke is writing here. He is saying that. Can you imagine? Paul is stoned. He's almost like dead. That is why they threw him out. Okay, they threw him out. But in verse twenty, he says, "Disciples gathered around him." Then what happened? Yeah, so coolly in one line he's writing, "This man is almost dead. He's stoned like Stephen." Disciples gathered around him means what? What did what might they have done for Paul at that time? they must have prayed that is why they gathered around him and then they prayed for paul so when they prayed for paul what happened what does it say he rose up and went into the city and the next day he departed with barnabas to derby as if nothing happened so a major healing took place in paul's body we don't even know what healing it could have been because he was badly stoned but when the disciples prayed paul was healed instantly and that is why it says he got up next day he is going for ministry can you imagine isn't that supernatural right it is but how did it happen because of group prayer because of prayers of agreement okay so the point that we want to make is you see for our group prayer to be effective one is agreement that we all know now we need agreement second is group faith the faith which we carry as a community is also very important so when we carry strong faith as a community what happens we can fight the devil we can you know uh, declare a supernatural healings we can declare the supernatural power of god as a community with strong faith you know it it is amazing how we can impact whether it is you know our city or the nations of the world so a community of faith is what god is looking for and of course to stand in agreement to pray in agreement so build up the faith of the community imagine now you know as a community uh, let's say we observe certain things that are going on in our in our uh, church uh, let's say uh, people are sick sickness and disease we won't keep quiet all of us will exercise our faith together and say no devil you can't make the people sick we rebuke you in the name of jesus we stand right in continuous faith then what what happens people in our community start getting healed because all of us are exercising our collective faith got it or let's imagine there are people in our um, you know uh, community who um, who are in lack or uh, they don't have a job or they don't have money or they are struggling right we use our collective faith to pray for such people to help such people and what happens suddenly we see people are getting blessed one by one one by one you know things are happening in their lives or um, any such example anything that people are going through as a community we observe right so many things we observe we may observe uh, you know the the days that we live in today are so uh, crazy because of the media and all we have little children in our church like they're all growing up and they have so much influence around them but when we see these children they are being affected by wrong things uh, from the media or from their friends as a church family we can stand up we can pray protection over their lives that god uh, we declare that you know all the children whom you have given us uh, they are taught of the lord great will be their peace you will pour out your spirit on on the children what are we doing we are exercising our faith as a community so that all the children they are walking in the ways of god so what happens is a community of faith it's uh, sort of dangerous for the devil it's like the book of acts they all got together and they prayed when they prayed there was more miracles when they prayed peter got delivered when they prayed paul got healed so when we pray today as a community strong community uh, there can be 
great breakthroughs in the lives of people right maybe there are people there are delays in their lives no problem as a community we can pray for them sometimes we gather together we call out their name and then we pray but sometimes we don't even we may not even gather together right when we see a need we keep it in our hearts and imagine you know one person uh, doesn't have a job and uh, five other people in church know about it quietly we are praying for that brother or or, or that sister then it's very powerful because it will bless their life collectively we are all exercising our faith for that particular person so collective faith is also powerful and we need to in increase it so same things that apply for personal faith apply for collective faith how to how to have strong collective faith in the congregation what do you think like if you're a leader and you want all your people to be strong in faith together what would you do hmm? what to do as a leader what to do because we want everybody to have strong faith and believe together same things whatever personal applies same applies here correct so we need to teach the word in such a way that it is building the faith of everyone got it that's why teaching the word in a proper way is important then everyone's faith will grow second exercise faith right so how to exercise faith give people opportunities to pray maybe we can say okay um all life group leaders please come you pray for these people or uh, young people like what we are trying to do right come for youth missions you will have some opportunities to minister step out do something do something exercise your faith right so in this way when we provide opportunities for them to minister together faith grows otherwise one side is feeding right what will happen if you only feed 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 and no exercise it just become nice and round right but that's not how faith works we've got to feed it and we've got to exercise it so provide opportunities for people to exercise their faith in this way collectively we can grow in our faith right so that is why like i think when we did the mentoring session on uh, thursday on the call people were asking about um, raising leaders right and uh, what was shared was that uh, intentionally we have to find people give them opportunities help them to grow because that's the way they can exercise their faith but we have to give them opportunities you got it so in this way we can raise up leaders provide opportunities on one side build the faith feed the word on another side let the faith work make the faith work and that way as a community we can just become stronger and stronger and our faith will also grow exceedingly together but what can be some challenges as far as exercising faith as a group or a community is concerned what can be some difficulties when we um, you know like we we are saying as a team or as a group let the church family exercise their faith but what can be some issues that may come up when we ask for groups to pray together or work together what do you think group ministry so usually what are the problems in teams when we put people in teams some problems happen what are those problems maybe they will not all agree on the same thing uh they may not be on the same page yeah true okay disagreement they can have disagreement how to work on disagreement well you have to speak to them all correct correct so first of all teach the word and as a leader maybe we'll have to intervene to yeah. guide them properly whenever there's disagreement okay we need to sort it out that's correct even akhil is saying difference of opinion 
so it happens we all are different people so working together is not the easiest thing um what about complaining murmuring it happens right so when people are working together there's a lot of complaints this is not good that is not good he is not good she is not good right so as leaders we must uh, resolve it or we have to make sure that we deal with these problems early enough otherwise it will spoil the morale of the group the whole group uh, if they continue like this with complaining murmuring they lose their energy right so murmuring and complaining can be an issue uh, competition you know how uh, in even in in uh, spiritual circles it's so sad but there can be competition do you agree with me is it possible like how 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 do we have competition in the spiritual groups like for example you know okay i am praying better than him or i can prophesy more than him you know what i mean so but what is all this it's competition it's strife so people are not praying for the sake of seeing the breakthrough they are praying for the sake of showing their gifts showing their ability their talent so competition can happen so as a leader we have to watch if we find that something like this is going on then we need to step in and correct in a quick way in a uh, in a uh, nice way so we cannot give place for competition or even jealousy or you know self pride and all all of that so uh, how do we actually make sure that um, you know we form groups in a proper way so what we generally say is when we form a group it's nice to have some experienced people and some inexperienced people right you can have a combination uh, so let's imagine we are going for uh, like we do this in our mission trips what we do is when we take large teams uh, we will have at least um, uh, let's say two or three people in one group uh, especially when we are ministering through prophetic prayer we will pray for people right uh, in after the services so we would encourage about two or three people to be part of the team not one person but two or three people the reason is they learn to work together even in the prophetic anointing they can kind of uh, minister together uh, i think um, sam's on the call here if uh, you recall sam when we went to gujarat we had uh, some some prophetic prayer towards the end where we prayed for all the the young people who had come and uh, at that time i remember with sam there were a few more people we all formed small teams and we were you know hearing from god and we had to minister as a team so how it works is you see god may give a little bit of information or a little bit of revelation to one person and then a little bit of revelation to another person and a little bit to another person so it takes a lot of humility to to release that word right because you're not the only person that god is speaking to god is speaking to everyone and everyone is releasing it and maybe one person is stronger they encourage the people who are new in releasing the word of prophecy so this way even the weaker person gets encouraged right and uh, let's say one person is very weak in prophecy and they get a picture they share it now the people who are already strong they will say something like correct correct what you're seeing is correct because i am also seeing the same thing then what will happen to the weaker person they get so encourage that yeah correct i'm seeing the right thing and i'm saying the right thing so you're building each other up as a team so as leaders even when we put a team together somewhere we need to be strategic okay don't just put people together randomly and they end up fighting and quarreling and you know complaining that should not happen look at how the teams can function effectively right so in such a way that those who are strong 
can maybe build up the the younger ones okay now imagine if uh, one person is used to talking a lot or uh, you know always used to praying a lot then they'll never give a chance for all the others you got it but as a leader we can guide them we can say look everyone should get a chance not only one person everyone should get a chance so in this way we can guide the teams and the teams can function uh, in a manner that is effective and um, sort of helping one another not putting each other down got it so that's a little bit about team work and collective faith how we must exercise it even jesus when he um, sent people for ministry you remember he sent two by two right uh, he said okay two by two you go disciples go together and minister or uh, 70 others whom he called he sent them two by two why two by two he could have sent them alone no for ministry yeah i agree with each other uh, what sister to agree with each other correct to agree with to each other agree. yeah just be supportive towards one another these are all the reasons why 2 by 2 is generally helpful to uh, do the ministry okay okay now we'll come to a question where people say um you know when we pray in a group everybody should have strong faith if one person does not have strong faith the prayer will not work is that is that correct is that wrong Okay, Sandra says not true, uh, and Parmita also says it's wrong. So, could you tell me why? There are instances, right, when Jesus went to pray for one dead girl, and people were crying in the room, and he said, "Okay, all of you, uh, uh, those who are crying, you go out." And he had only his disciples with him to minister to that person. So, what does that mean? doesn't it mean that the people with weak faith should be out when we are praying okay sanjay team work the strength of the mature ones cover the ones who are learning okay that's fine but what about that incident where uh, you know jesus sent the people out what do you have to say about that sister probably they have no faith yeah probably they don't have faith and he asked them to leave uh, the question i am asking is should we also do the same thing if people don't have faith should we tell them okay you leave only those who have faith should uh, stay and pray no sister because jesus uh, was enough alone with his faith <laughs> we we are not so strong like jesus okay but we should not leave them because we have to encourage them uh huh okay so, so only when we allow them they will be encouraged in faith they will learn from us mm hmm okay so uh, sister gertrude is saying we don't have to do that we don't have to ask people to leave um and that people can learn from us okay so i'm just coming to that passage here yeah we are this is in luke 8 and uh, verse 50 onwards so i'll just read it quickly it says but when jesus heard it 
he answered him saying do not be afraid only believe and she will be made well when he came into the house he permitted no one to go in except peter james and john and the father and the mother of the girl now all wept and mourned for her but he said do not weep she is not dead but sleeping and they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead but he put them all outside took her by the hand and called saying little girl arise then her spirit returned and she arose immediately and he commanded that she be given something to eat and her parents were astonished but he charged them to tell no one what had happened so over here right he took peter james and john the father and mother to go inside to raise that dead dead girl based on this many ministers of god also say that if you have anyone who is weak in the faith then the miracle won't happen so ask them to leave right but when we consider this kind of a situation how to understand it see this is by far the only time when jesus asked the weak people in the faith to leave but in all other instances there were a lot of people weak in the faith wherever he was think about uh, uh, the boat when there was a storm jesus and his disciples did they have good faith no right but did jesus do the miracle yes think about the time when he multiplied the the fish and bread did they all believe no they were doubting philip was calculating from where to bring the bread right but jesus did the miracle even when people had weak faith jesus could minister so to say that the weak faith of a person will affect my faith and i won't see the result that's not correct biblically but we may find that there are some stories like even some good ministers of god in the past they believed like this they said uh, if i'm going to raise somebody from the dead or anything i will go only with those who have strong faith so if anyone has weak faith ask them to leave there are people they have done those things and it worked for them right so that let's leave it but according to the bible we don't have to do that so yes having collective faith is important but even if there are only one or two people who believe or even one person who believes the miracle can still happen got it okay great so those are some key thoughts from our chapter here and uh, i think we have only like a few more chapters to go so hopefully if we finish fast then uh, we can give you the classes for review or uh, you can do your assignment during your classes okay no question right you have a question okay yeah ma'am uh, suppose like i and cyril are praying praying for one purpose but praying for different places means not 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 gathering and because of some, some reasons and we are praying for his in his home and my, i am in my home so is that okay it's okay it's okay yeah there's no distance in prayer so it's okay yeah good all right so uh, let's close then we we'll close uh, with a word of prayer uh, who would like to pray please glorious father we thank you for the class as we learned in this class uh, how collective prayer is powerful so lord help us to pray as you taught us lord and each and every one must learn what uh, our teacher is teaching us lord help to understand everything properly and holy spirit guide us lead us to do the will the lord has for us in jesus precious name i am asking this prayer amen Amen man thank you thank you nelson thank you everyone god bless you
Have a blessed day.